Morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. Uh, I apologize. I'm a little ill, so I'm going to try to uh, I'm going to try to push through it here. But uh, nothing could keep me from today. Um, today we are able to celebrate the groundbreaking uh, for the McMillan Project. Can we please get a round of applause for that? It's taken. <laughs> Similar to many of the projects that are in the deputy mayor's portfolio, uh, a lot of this does not happen by one individual. It happens literally with a village and a village over many years. And so I would personally like to thank a number of people. I will not go through all of them, but uh, just to highlight, um, there's some folks in the deputy mayor's office, uh, Gilles Stucker in particular, who's been the project manager on the project for a while. Please give Gilles a round of applause. He has been instrumental to making sure that this project happens. Our Director of Real Estate Development, Surosh Opadwala, along with our legal team, uh, Jen Castor and Susan Longstreet, have been uh, relentless in making sure this happens. There's been lots of people over the history of time. Uh, project managers Clint Jackson, Shiv Neweldoss are two that I remember over time. Uh, we've had, uh, obviously, our development partners, which is the Vision McMillan Partners team. And I think that we have representatives from all of them here today for EYA, Jire Lynch, and Trammell Crow Companies. Uh, so we appreciate their efforts over many years to make sure that this project is a success. Um, those are more of the operational pieces, but really what this project is about is uh, the difference that it's going to make to the communities around here. And so from that perspective, very much want to thank all of the ANCs. Could all the ANCs that are here, if they could raise their hand, please? I know that we've got 5E, lots of ANCs that have worked for years tirelessly. Uh, to make sure that this project is a success. Um, so very much want to thank them. I know there's a number of different civic associations, and if I forget anybody, please don't get mad at me. The Bates Area Civic Association, the Bloomingdale Civic Association, the Eckington Civic Association, the Edgewood Civic Association, the Detroit Park Civic Association, the Stronghold Civic Association, the Parkview Civic Association, the Pleasant Plains Civic Association, the Hanover Civic, Ex Civic Association, uh, the members of the McMillan Advisory Group, DC Water, and the U.S. Co uh, Army Corps of Engineers for all of their help. Let's give them all a round of applause. And obviously, finally, um, just a number of D.C. government agencies have been really uh, helpful. Uh, if you see the art that's sort of wrapping, uh, the, wrapping the project right now, the D.C. Commission on Arts and Humanities has been instrumental in making sure that we try to get some creative and active uses on the site. Uh, the Department of General Services will be moving forward with lots of the things that we're going to be breaking ground on today, uh, which is the historic stabilization and preservation work. But uh, DPR, DCRA uh, have been instrumental to make sure that this project, Office of Planning, to make sure this project is a success. I know that I also want to recognize we have uh, Kurt Newman, the president of Children's National Hospital across the street. He's here. Thank you, Kurt, for being here with us. Uh, you all probably know what I'm going to say. I got three jobs, right? I got three jobs, uh, and that is to make sure that we are continuing to get D.C. residents jobs, uh, that we are increasing tax revenue in the District of Columbia, and that we are focused on affordable housing. And uh, while I say those three things, uh, not, uh, and I say normally that every project that's in our portfolio has to hit one, if not two, and hopefully three uh, of those items, it is rare that I get a project that hits all three. And this project is one that hits all three. There are literally thousands of jobs. There is hundreds of millions of tax revenue. And there are hundreds of units of affordable housing that will be provided at this site in a time and a place when it never, never used to happen. I unfortunately am old enough to remember and been associated with the deputy mayor's office uh, since 2009 to remember we used to have this list that we used to present. And it was all the big projects in the District of Columbia. And we used to talk about our status around them. And those projects were Walter Reed and St. Elizabeth's and Capitol Crossing and City Center, uh, as well as the McMillan Project. And I'm happy to report uh, that really over the last 18 to 24 months, we have made significant progress on every single one of those projects. Which is really the first time in history that we've been able to, I think, really move on some of those uh, underdeveloped uh, pieces of property that are in Washington, D.C., that most importantly will be the new places where people live, people shop, people go to school, uh, and, pe and places where people get jobs. So we're very excited about being able to move forward on all those projects, but in particular uh, excited about moving forward on the McMillan project. Uh, now, I'm unfortunately probably old enough and young enough to remember this project, but I don't actually think that I've actually been in, um, involved with this project as long as the person I'm about to introduce, who was our mayor. Uh, both as a council member and head of the Economic Development Committee, 
uh, for the uh, when she was on council, but also uh, as a community member and a community leader uh, for many years before she was mayor. Uh, I know that that the mayor has been intr intimately involved. Uh, and all of the concepts and ideas around McMillan and making sure that it's success. And so uh, I know that it's particularly um, particularly a, a point of, of, of happiness to be able to be here to talk about and to really uh, kick off the McMillan project and to see it uh, actually come to life. Uh, so with no further ado, I would like to bring up our mayor, Mayor Muriel Bowser. Thank you, Mayor. Well, good morning, everybody. I am uh, really happy to, to be here and happy to see all of you and happy to celebrate our progress at this site. As Brian was talking, I was thinking to myself, I have literally driven or walked or been driven by uh, this site uh, just about every day of my life. Uh, and I am reminded of something that my mother would say uh, just about every time we would drive by it. She would say, when are they going to do something about that place? When are they going to do something about that place? Uh, now, my mom worked over at this hospital complex at the Veterans Administration Hospital and later uh, at NRH. I think you know that my father was born and raised right down the street here at LaDroit Park. And over the course of our lives, we've lived, worked, or had family in and around uh, this neighborhood. And I grew up not too far from here in North Michigan Park. And I, the question my mother would ask me all of those times uh, took on a new resonance when I was a council member, but even more uh, when I became mayor. So when are they going to do something about that place is something that we all have to, to answer uh, because we have a very rich uh, opportunity here right in the middle of our city, surrounded by great uh, Ward 5 neighborhoods. So when are they going to do something about that place is now. And we've been working on it. And now we get to realize and begin to realize those opportunities. So here we have the opportunity to save and preserve some very rich historical resources. We have the opportunity to attract housing and commercial activity and to create a beautiful park. Here we have the opportunity to put Washingtonians to work and have affordable places for people to live. So I'm very excited that now nearly uh, 30 years uh, after people have been talking about when are we going to do something about that place, we can say today we start to preserve our history, invest in our parks, create great housing, have wonderful places for people to live, and do all the things that Brian is charged to do, create more revenue certainly for the District of Columbia, more housing for D.C. Uh, residents, and more jobs for Washingtonians so that they can continue to f afford to live here in our wonderful city. So today marks that wonderful chapter uh, in our progress as a city. When I, talk, when I took office, I promised that we would focus on the big city projects that Brian mentioned, but also on the neighborhood projects that serve each and every one of us. And we are, are delivering on those promises. We see activity at St. Elizabeth's, putting people to work and attracting more jobs and amenities uh, to Ward 8. Uh, we broke ground on Walter Reed last week. And uh, next year, children are going to be going to school on that campus. We're going to open a new fire station, and we're already seeing housing and economic development spin off of the campus onto Georgia Avenue and up Georgia Avenue. Uh, we have seen major construction, as Brian mentioned, at Capitol Crossing, a $1.3 billion project in Ward 6 uh, that nobody could quite envision happening, but now it's happening. And so what we will have here at McMillan, 2 million square feet of community development, 6,000 jobs, 650 units of housing with over 120 affordable units. 120 affordable units right here in Ward 5. Ooh. That's a lot. And more than 1 million square feet of health care facilities. 
Now, this is one thing I know, too, uh, that health care providers employ a lot of D.C. residents, and they are a critical um, part of the fabric of our economy. I also know when they look at that campus, they're saying, where are we going to go from here? Uh, and they're going to go someplace. The question is, are we going to build an environment in Washington, D.C., where they will grow right here where they got started? So I want to thank you, Kurt, for your commitment to Washington, D.C., uh, at Walter Reed, and we, we hope right here on Ward 5. So while we celebrate the start of activity here, uh, we know that there's still a lot more to do. Uh, and Brian has outlined that we will get started. We've already transferred the funds uh, for our Department of General Services to start with the infrastructure and historic preservation stabilization, and also something that is very, very important to your council member. And now, council member and McDuffie and I have been in lockstep on how we move McMillan forward, how we're responsive to community concerns, but also how we deliver uh, for the community that needs this housing and amenities. And it was also very important for the council member uh, that that we agreed on the affordable housing units that will be here and the recreation space, in addition to six wonderful acres of park um, that we are going to make sure it serves uh, the residents of Washington, D.C. for generations to come, but also fantastic recreation facilities. So I want to thank Brian and his team. I also want to thank all of my directors who are here who have played a critical uh, part in getting us to this point. Uh, our OP director, Eric Shaw, our DCRA director, M Melinda Bowling, our DGS director, Greer Gillis, our arts and humanities director, Espinoza, and also from housing finance agency, Todd Lee. Will you all stand and be recognized, members of my cabinet who have been so critical uh, in working with Brian and his team uh, to get us to that point. Uh, but let me uh, turn to uh, the council member because I know that in his time on the council uh, working on positive neighborhood and enhancing economic development projects has been at the forefront of his agenda, and I'm proud to have partnered um, with him to get us to this day. Council Member McDuffie. Good morning. Um, I need all the folks who are seated up here, all these ANC commissioners, civic association presidents, come on up here and join me, please. Join me. Come on, Bradley. Come on, Robert. Mr. Clark, I saw you. Frank, come on up here. Madam Mayor, if you indulge me, and I know you understand why, why we're doing this here, uh, it's because this has been a, a, a real, true labor, labor of love uh, for a lot of people in the District of Columbia, right? Uh, yeah. This is going to be a destination when it's finished, Madam Mayor, uh, that fulfills your vision, my vision uh, for this historic site. Uh, but it took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, quite frankly, yeah. uh, to get to today. And the folks who are standing uh, side by side with me today are the folks who are seated side by side with me uh, for the last several years, and many of them were doing this when I was still a kid, wandering around the neighborhood across the street in Stronghold, uh, yeah. trying to make something happen here uh, at this site. And so I wanted them to stand up here uh, to be recognized for their work uh, that they've contributed uh, all these years to this effort. And I want to just recognize them by name. So I know uh, Commissioner Barnes, Commissioner Smith Steiner, Commissioner Quinn, Commissioner Williams, Commissioner Thomas, uh, Frank Ross, Commissioner Wiles, Commissioner Edwards. I think Commissioner Pinckney, uh, Mr. Clark, uh, everybody's here. We wanted to recognize everybody uh, who has been a part of this effort from the community, representing uh, their constituents, advocating tirelessly uh, to make sure that their interests were represented. So let's give them a round of applause for all their efforts. We have worked uh, with the development team, uh, with VMP. I want to recognize them for all the work that they've been doing. Uh, we have not agreed on everything throughout this process. But when in government, do everybody always agree on everything, Never. right? Never. Sometimes. <laughs> Very seldom. Uh, but what I do think most people will agree with is that we care. We care about this site. We care about the history of what it meant to the residents of the District of Columbia. 
Uh, and we care that when it's all said and done with this development, that it actually serves not only the District of Columbia at large, uh, but the neighbors who are going to be impacted by the project. And that's what we've tried to do from day one. And so uh, I really wanted to just come up here to say thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I wanted to say thank you to all the folks uh, who've put in so much time, folks like Tony Norman, uh, who I don't think is here today. You know, folks like Arthur Kincaid, who's my next door neighbor, uh, who uh, you know, filed suit against the city all those decades ago because he cared about uh, the history of this site. Uh, again, we don't always agree on everything, but I think we can agree that we love uh, McMillan. Uh, we want to see the best for this site, uh, and we want to make sure at the end of the day uh, that the 600 and what are we up to now? 75,000 or 80,000 residents of the District of Columbia, Madam Mayor? 682,000 residents of the District of Columbia have a site that serves their interests, serves their needs, and is going to be a destination uh, in a world-class city right here in the District of Columbia. So thank you all uh, for being here today, and I can't wait to turn some dirt.